All right, welcome back guys. Um, so the other day I posted uh, some pictures on Instagram of this wheel well here behind me that I had made in one piece and I had shrank the top over uh, about seven inches deep and I have about a one inch radius in the corner. Um, you can see it here behind me and uh, I'll do a close up of it and insert it here into the video while I talk. But a bunch of people were like, man, I really hope that you uh, recorded this uh, while you were making it and you made a YouTube video or you know, that I had hoped to and um, hoped to plan to record stuff uh, on this part, and I didn't record anything on the one behind me, but I do have the mirror part I need to make. So I have a left hand and a right hand. So I figured this would be a good time to kind of talk about shrinking and the power hammer use of shrinking and get into a little bit more detail on it and document the process of making this part. So this part is, pretty much all shrink work. There's some blending and some planishing, but that's the minimal amount of work towards the end. To get that brought over at a 90 degree from the flat face to a flat face on the top is all shrink work. And we patterned uh, another wheel well I had that was similar, except I, it had a sharper angle on it, and I wanted to make this one a much more gradual radius, so I. Uh, I changed the design a little bit with the pattern to get the radius I wanted. Um, so I'll do a close up on the pattern, which is here. And um, pretty much I just patterned the wheel well I had, and this was the center line of my radius. And you can see all my shrink marks where I'd had my tucks folded up. And um, I laid out how I wanted my radius to fall um, with three quarters on both sides. And when we switch over to our panel, you can see that I've got everything laid out exactly the same as the pattern, except backwards, because this is for the other side that I patterned. So we've got everything laid out. It's, um, I put about three quarters of an inch of extra material all the way around so I can trim it and adjust it. But I have all our notes laid out. And when we get to that point, I'll talk more about some of the extra notes I have on here that are just for this video, just to help me explain things on the process of shrinking to where and to why and to get that nice and precise. But before we get to that point, I do have a little bit of schoolwork we need to cover. Um, just so people that are new either to my channel or to metal shaping as a whole, um, we can talk a little bit about what we're doing and what I, what I mean when we talk about shrink. Um, so a good thing I like to keep in mind, uh, even when I teach classes here or at other facilities, um, try to keep things simple. Um, you know, don't let things get overcomplicated. Don't think too hard about it because if you break everything down, there's only five things that we can do to metal. We can shrink it, stretch it, cut it, bend it, and weld it. Those are the five key principles to make anything out of metal, whether it be a car, a boat, a bridge, um, artwork, anything. If you're dealing with metal, you can cut it, shrink it, stretch it, bend it, and weld it. Other than that, you're pretty much just gonna melt it down and start over. So when it comes to shaping, we're going to be focusing on shrinking and stretching only. The other ones, we're just not gonna worry about right now. So we're shrinking and stretching, which is essentially thinning, which is stretching, or thickening, which is shrinking. Um, so I'm gonna move the camera over, and I've got this sheet kind of laid out that talks about shrinking and how we're going to shrink with thumbnail dies on the power hammer, how it works, even down to the grain structure of the metal to give you a better understanding of how you're thickening and thinning the metal. So let me reposition the camera. We'll talk about this. Then I'll show you the dies. Then I'll show you the, the remainder of the layout on the panel. And then we'll get over and we can actually start shrinking on the power hammer. All right, so I've kind of drawn up some, uh, just some notes here. And I'm not the best artist, so sorry if it sucks. But SH, uh, that's how I label everything on my panel. So you can see it here. That's for shrink. So shrink is we're gathering or we're taking the grain structure and we're bringing it together, gathering it, which equals thickening. So how we're going to achieve that is we're going to be making tucks. You can make a tuck with a mallet and a lead bag or a stump. 
that is a lot of work and you're kind of limited on the depth you want to do your shrinking on. Um, so if we made this, this panel with a mallet, it would take forever and my arms would be so tired. So we're gonna use the power hammer, but the concept is exactly the same. So this kind of translates and what a tuck is, is it just kind of folds up here as the illustration says you can use a tucking fork or a mallet and when we get into shaping, you'll see what the, the tucks look like on the power hammer and I'll show you one before we close it. So you use the dies and you put a tuck in on your feed in to the power hammer. It creates the tuck and then as you pull the panel back out, it closes the tuck. So kind of a close up drawing of the tuck is here and as we're pulling out, the dies are taking that triangular tuck and they're working it into, into itself kind of closing it just like this. So you're taking the material and you're pushing it together and on a molecular level, you're thickening the metal. So how that works is this is kind of a rough sketch of what like a 1018 mild steel grain structure looks like. Um, just random kind of almost, almost like glitter or oat flakes. Um, so that's n what a normal grain structure looks like. So when we're gathering that, they're slightly overlapped. We're taking those and we're sliding them together even more. So we're gathering the grains, stacking them, kind of pulling them in to tighten them up. And it will go from roughly looking like that to roughly looking like this. Again, sorry for my terrible illustrations, but I figured illustrations might be easier than just talking about it. So you're taking your metal, sliding the grains together, which is thickening. So it moves down to thickening. So that's all we're going to do is gather everything up and make the metal thicker and that will allow us to shrink that over to a 90. All right, so with our layout here, and this is the side profile. So this flat is this flat area where I've got labeled no shrink. So the first is this blue line that comes all the way to the start of the radius where it starts to come around the top. So our first set of shrinks, um, I'm actually gonna put my shrinks a lot closer um, when I'm doing it, but I kind of left it wide so it's easier for you guys to see. So I will come in on our first set of shrinks and I will shrink to the start of our radius line and I'll you know, do that all the way across the panel. And essentially what that'll do is that'll take that from a flat, sh flat sheet and that'll shrink that over um, to whatever degree that is. Um, I don't have it labeled here, but it'll pull that over and it'll be shrunk down. So then on our second one, we will come to the center line of our radius and that's noted here with these red shrink marks. So we'll shrink to the center line of our radius. And again, that will pull that over at another angle. So you'll be flat, pulled down, pulled down again, and on our third set, we will come to the stop of our radius, which is uh, labeled here with this third blue line. And after that set of shrinks, it'll be almost to a 90 at this point. The end of our panel will still be up extremely high and extremely loose because there's a lot more metal that needs shrink out here at the end of our panel. So if you look at the shape of a tuck, there's a lot more material here than there is here, and this is just exaggerated there. So to get this to pull over to a 90, there's gonna be way more shrink passes here to get that tight. So once we get our three sets pulled over to achieve our radius, then all of our shrinks will stop at the end of our radius to pull that back over at a 90. So that's kind of how we're gonna do things. We're gonna start shrinking all of this over to get it pulled roughly to a 90. Then we're gonna blend all of our shrink marks out and get it somewhat smooth. And then we can adjust the panel as need be with more shrinking and more blending. And then we can start planishing everything out to get our surface finish uh, refined, our light lines dialed in, and kinda any low spots raised, high spots we can shrink. Just get everything blended out smooth and correct any tooling marks that we might get along the way. So this is kind of our initial layout and a little bit of the science on how things are gonna work for making a tuck, shrinking the tuck in on itself, 
showing how the grain is going to be gathered and thickened, you know, by essentially taking these little pieces and gathering them, stacking them on top of each other, and thickening, and then how our profile is going to look from the side with our each individual sets of shrinks to get the panel pulled over. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. If not, drop me a comment and I'll try to either make a new video that explains it or I can try to answer it in the comment section. So that is this part. So what we're going to do is we're going to use thumbnail shrinking dies. So that's what this process is called is thumbnail shrinking dies because it kind of looks like a thumb. So this is the male die that goes in the bottom of the power hammer and that creates our tuck here. So the panel will come in whatever the depth is, so we'll just say that this is seven inches. We'll run that in seven inches and we'll create the tuck and on the way out it'll gather that metal around this thumb by using the top or the female die. So as it's hammering up and down like this, as you're pulling the panel out it'll take that metal and it'll gather it over the thumb and close it when you get here just right in front of the thumb. Again, that'll be creating the tuck shrinking the tuck, gathering the grain. So with a mallet, you know, you can do as many strikes per minute as your strong enough or stamina, uh, as your stamina can provide. So you might be looking at 30 to 60 strikes a minute and they're not always going to be the same force, um, the same speed, so there's going to be a little bit of a variant. So when it comes to power hammers, you're working with um, a lot more accuracy and also efficiency. So the power hammer, it will strike, depending on the speed you have it set at, anywhere from 10 beats per minute all the way up to 500. So, and it's always the same, other than how you feather the pedal. You know, you're always running roughly the same RPM, the same striking force, everything. So you can really shape this panel quickly versus doing it by hand. So now we're going to set up the power hammer with our shrinking dies and get that all set and then we can get into the actual shaping process of doing all our shrinking to get this pulled over. So I just changed out the tooling here on the MH37 HD power hammer so I'm going to check kind of our clearances. So I'm going to raise the lower tool post back up and bring the upper ram down to the bottom of our stroke and we want about three sixteenths of an inch so we're a little tight so I'm going to open that gap up just a touch and I'm going to turn our stroke down just a hair I've got it hitting um, pretty hard for where I was blending everything out yesterday so I'm going to start off with our stroke or the force of our hit a little bit lower and as the metal comes around it'll start to work hard in a little bit and then I can turn the hammer back up. We don't want the hammer to hit so hard that it's stretching our shrink. We want it to be hitting just hard enough to where it smoothly closes the tuck and smooths everything out but not so hard that we're coining the end or we're creating a lot of stretch. So just hard enough to close the tuck and that's as all it needs, you know. You don't need to run this thing wide open when you're shrinking. Um, you just kind of have to adjust it by feel, watch how the panel and the shrinks are reacting, and adjust accordingly from there. So now that the hammer's set up, I can grab my apron, my gloves, ear protection, and our blank, and we can get ready to start shaping. All right, so I've got my leather apron on, and the reason that you want to wear an apron is on a panel that big, I'm going to be using my body to help hold it, and the metal is sharp, and I don't want to cut through my shirt into my skin. So I've got the panel set off the side, because before I get into shaping, I wanted to show you how quick the power hammer will perform a tuck, and show you what the tuck looks like before we close it. So I'm going to go ahead and run just the end, uh, the end process, show you the tuck, and then I'll shrink it out and then I'll perform another in and out shrinking process. So here you can see there's the tuck. You can see that's the overall shape and that's how quick the hammer puts that in. But then on the way out it will hammer across it 
and it will gather everything in, thicken the metal, and shrink it. So I'll put it back in the hammer and we'll shrink on the way out and then I'll do another shrink roughly about here to show you the full process of creating the tuck, closing the tuck for a full shrink on the way out. So here we have, this is the one I did and showed you the tuck. It's closed, that one's closed, and you can see that it's starting to pull that down into a compound shape. And just like I said before, there's going to be a lot more shrink needed here at the edge than there is here because there's going to be so much more material to pull around. So if you think of our wheel well, as I described it on the piece of paper from the side profile, this is our flat. That's this will be where our radius starts, and that'll be the first set, and then we'll do another set and a third set to tighten it over. So now I can switch over to the blank for the wheel well, and we can start the initial shaping process. So we're ready to roll. I've applied a little bit of panel lube just where I'm gonna be shrinking, just to help it uh, glide through the dies a little bit better and not really uh, feel kind of gummy. So let's get to shrinking. So now I've shrank half of our panel and I want to go back over to the table and kind of show you a couple things before I shrink the other half. That way we have a shrink side and a not shrink side so you can see the difference and kind of how the panel's moving. All right, so I've shrank this side of the panel on my first set of shrinks. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can see the panel kind of pulling down. You can see the amount it shrank here at the start of our radius mark versus here. This edge is a lot looser, so it's kind of wavy and ripply. That's what I was talking about with needing that much more shrink here because we're shrinking in so deep. But one thing that is super critical, and I didn't mention and I probably should have, this line is super critical because if you shrink to this point here, and then you shrink to this point here, and you're not consistent on your starts and stops, your light line is gonna get inconsistent. And you want that nice, consistent, clean line where your radius starts, flows through, and stops. So your starts and stops are super critical. And you always have to make sure to land right on this line. There's a little bit of fudging, but not much. So you always wanna do your best to hit that line dead on every time. So if I rotate this a little bit, you can see that we've got a nice consistent shrink pattern and you can see how it just kind of flattens out into nothing here. So as I come over and I shrink on this side of the panel, we'll get it all pulled over. And also, as I said before, I'm kind of, I'm shrinking the red line and the blue line in our first stage because I laid this out to be a little bit exaggerated to make it easier to see in the video, but I need our shrinks to be on the red line and the blue line at this point. And then also when we step back to the center line, I will do the same 
and then the same thing at the end of our radius to get that to pull over evenly. So hopefully there's not much confusion with why I had it laid out that we were going to come to the, the center line of the radius on the red lines, but I went to the, the start of it. But again, that was just for ease of the video to show you kind of how the pattern was going to work with where our shrinks would start and stop. But I need a lot more shrinks to these points than I drew just so the panel didn't get cluttery in the video. So you get set back up over at the hammer and I'll get the rest of this shrank over for our first full set of shrinks. So there's our first set of shrinks all the way up to the start of our radius line. And you can see how it's pulling everything over. Um, the form's a little out right now. A lot of that's being caused by this edge having so much material that still needs shrank over. Um, but as we tighten that up, the form will kind of relax a little bit. So this is the first set all the way across. So next up, I'll come back and we will shrink to the center line of our radius all the way around. And then I'll come back and we'll do to the stop of our radius, and then it'll just be fine tuning this edge and getting everything tightened back up to where it's happy and it's kind of neutral, and we can start blending out. So I'm gonna break this up into a couple episodes just so it's not so monotonous and overbearing. So thanks for watching this video. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section. Um, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, how I laid it out, how the material is moving, I can do my best to answer that or come up with a secondary video to explain it more in depth. Um, so again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for episode two where I continue the shrinking and blending process. And we're gonna make the mirror of this wheel well and we'll see you on the next one.